Oh, if the wind never quit blowing and the gray clouds always cover the sky and the billows keep on rolling and rain, 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 rain all the time if the moon Decide not to shine at night And the stars Never give another twilight You gave me Lord, you gave me One more sunny day Oh, you gave me You spoke to the clouds, yeah. You spoke to the wind. You spoke to the billows, yeah. Hey, hey, one more, one more. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, one more sunny day, day to pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You gave me. I know you gave me one more sunny day. Yeah. You gave me. You spoke to the clouds. And you spoke to the You spoke to the billows. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, now, one more. One more. One more. One more. One more day. One more day to sit down and pray today. One more. One more. Thank you, Lord. You gave me one more chance to pray. Praise your name. Call on. Your holy name, one more, one more, one more, one more. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. One more, 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 one more. Day to pray. One more. Thank you, Lord. Hey, one more, one more, one more. Thank you, Jesus. One more cloudy day, sunny day, chance to pray. You gave me, Lord, you gave me one more sunny day.
Well, hello there again this morning. How y'all doing out there? Are you spirit led yet? I know he's in here. All right. Yes, you brought him in. Amen. So the thing is, we just want to see something this morning. You know, because we got to see what this God we can uh, that we have can do. And this right. God, I just believe he can do anything. All right. All right. But then we get lost along the way feeling like we know something. So I'm going to read Matthew 6 and 33. That whole chapter was wrote by Jesus. He, it was spoken by him. So the key is, it's his word telling us what direction we need. It said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Well, let's look at some things here. Because number one, he said, but seek the kingdom of God. 
You know, the kingdom of God is very, very important. We hear it throughout the Bible and stuff. And so, like, the thing is, if we just seek the kingdom of God, how are we going to know unless we study his word and find out what his kingdom truly is? Because the thing about it, we all need that kingdom. And as we do it, we keep getting stronger and better. He said, and his righteousness. So what do that mean? I want these children to know what his righteousness is. It's his right ways, not what you think is right, but his right ways. That's the only way you can do it. And then that way, Jesus said it like this right here, and all these things shall be added unto you. Well, what is all these things? When you go back and read that chapter entirely, you will see that men were seeking after what they thought was right. But then the thing about it, they were so far off until, I'm going to give some examples. You know, our bills, I'm sure everybody in here got some, <laughs> no matter how small or large they are. But we end up putting those before God. That's his right way? Wow. You can sit up here and say, okay, well, I don't do that. If your mind hadn't been on God ever since you woke up this morning, you had another God before you. And that should hit everybody because your mind hadn't been stayed on God like that. And the thing about it, you know, we look at all the things of the world that we can't have. You know why that, why that is? It's because we've been, I guess you said, uh, not taught, but we have been trained to go after things. The more things we have, the more popular we feel like we're going to be. I'm going to tell you, the more things you have, the more trouble you got. Because God going to give those things, you know, because he said it. If you went to Sunday school this morning, you know it's going to be trouble, and then it's going to be a feast. And the, thing, and the thing about it, God got to set how he wants it to go. So all these things will be added to you if you go about it the right way. And so, like, the thing is, that's why he had his right way in there and not the other way. Because the world show you that you can have this if you do this. You know, God just told you you're going to have them. It wasn't no if in it. It was complete. And so, like, the thing about it, what we have to do, we have to seek God's kingdom first. And meaning seek, that means really go after. So the things in the world, you know, like, we get it. And I pray that everybody in here is doing something for the people around them. Right. You know that's the only way you can serve, right? That's right. That's, right. that's how you serve God. You don't serve God by bringing your money up here. Right. He don't need your money. All right. All right. He needs you out here spiritually helping move people to help them get the Holy Spirit that you have. All right. And the thing about it, the more you do, the more you want to see people do better. And the more you look for it, the more you're going to dig. So it will keep you deep in the world of God. You will get so deep until it will be fearful to see who you truly have become. Because the thing is, the voice that you speak with won't be yours. Do that make sense? I know these seasoned veterans up here, they got it. <laughs> but at the same time, we want these children to have that type of life because they can influence somebody's life just as well as we can. So with this word being said, make sure you keep in mind, but keep, uh, seek ye the kingdom of God first and his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. Thank you. Listen while you still can hear. Listen while you still can hear. The master's call. 
the master's calling. Bow down while your knees still bend. Bow down while your knees still bend. The master's calling. The master's I don't want to run, walk away, walk away from him. Mm, I don't want to run, walk away, walk away from him. Find me to your
book of Revelation, for those of you that have your Bible, Revelation chapter number two. Revelations chapter number two. Revelation two, beginning at verse number eight. Reading this morning from the New King James Version. To the angel of the church of Smyrna write, These things says the first and the last, who was dead and came to life. I know your works, tribulation and poverty, but you are rich. And I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are synagogue of Satan. Do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested. You will have tribulation ten days. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. Eternal God, our Father, we pause right now in the name of Jesus. First of all, God, we want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord God, for being God and God all by yourself. Lord God, it was you that woke us up this morning. It was you that started us on another day's journey. It was you that watched over us all night on last night, God. And when we woke up this morning, God, we thank you, Lord God, that you touched us with a finger of love and allowed us to see another day we've never witnessed before, God. And Lord, we know that it's not because we've been so good. And God, we know that it's not because we obey your word so well. But it's simply because you are good and a merciful God that look beyond our faults and supplied every one of our needs. So God, we just said thank you, God. Thank you for all that you've done, God. Thank you for being our way out of no way. Thank you for being our help in trouble. Thank you for being our doctor in our sick room. Thank you for a roof over our head. Thank you for clothes on our back. God, you've been good to us. And God, we thank you. Hide me behind your cross. I pray, God, all of thee and none of me. Allow your word to go forth in this place, unhindered and unchecked. God, if you do, we'd be so careful to give you all the praise and to give you all the glory. For it is in the name of Jesus Christ that we do pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Amen. Come on. Can we give God a hand of praise? Oh, that's a pity, Pat. That's a pity, Pat. I said, can we give God a hand of praise? Amen, 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 amen. God is a good God, and he is definitely worthy of our praise. Uh, we give honor to God, who is absolutely the head of our life. We thank God for this privilege, for this opportunity. Anytime we stand to proclaim the word of God, it is a privilege. Amen. It is a privilege that we do not take lightly. So we thank God for this privilege, for this opportunity to the officers, to the leaders, to the mothers, to the deacons, to the, the trustees, the, the, the church family, and, and these singing folks behind me. Lord, I, I come from the country. I, I, I come from the other side of Pine Bluff in a little town called Alltime. I know y'all never heard of it. I, don't, don't worry about it if you ever heard of it. Don't worry. I tell people everywhere I go, I'm from Alltime. Amen. I graduated from Alltime High School. Amen. 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 And proud to be from that little town. Amen. And in and, and, and Alltime, they sang, but y'all over here? Lord Jesus, y'all, y'all singing, amen, amen, and, and I like that, I like good singing, amen, I like good singing, sound like y'all know something about the God that you've been singing about, amen, 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 there's a difference in people that's just singing, amen, amen, but there's a difference when they sing, amen, but, but anyway, I'm, I'm not a long-winded preacher, that's why I'm doing a whole bunch of talking right now, let me acknowledge these babies, let me acknowledge these babies, absolutely, can we give a hand to our babies, amen, amen, amen. I don't, I don't know where the little angels went that was on the door, but they look good. Amen. They look good. Amen. They look real good. Amen. Can we give it up for them? Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Mount Zion, for training up your children. Amen. Amen. The word says train up them in the way that they should go. Amen. And I believe that it's a good thing. Amen. To have, don't worry, babies. I'm not going to be long. Amen. I can look in their faces. Amen. Uh, 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 it's a good thing to have them in church. Amen. It's a good thing. And then y'all feed them when you first start today. Amen. 
I told, I, I told him, I said, I messed up coming in that door back there smelling all that food. Amen. It was hard for me to just pass on through there. But I made a vow to the Lord that whenever I'm standing to proclaim his word, I don't eat anything until after I have emptied myself. Amen. So I absolutely want Lord to have his way. Let me acknowledge my son. I thank God for my son. Son, can you stand, please? My son uh, uh, heard that... Uh, I was going uh, out of town, and he said, Dad, I'm going to go with you. Amen. Amen. And since he said, I'm going to go with you, I gave him the keys. Amen. 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 Ain't no sense in you riding. Amen. Let me ride. Amen. Amen. So we absolutely thank God for him. Thank God for him getting up early because I'm an I'm a early morning person. I believe in Sunday school. Amen. Amen. I believe in Sunday school. And I'm sorry I didn't see y'all this morning. You already making enemies. You just showed up, Pastor. I said, I'm sorry I didn't see y'all this morning because you missed a good Sunday school lesson. Amen? Amen. Sunday school's good. And Sunday school's not just for kids. Amen, somebody. Amen. You ain't got to like me. I'm going back to Little Rock in a little bit. Amen. It don't make no difference. Amen. But we need the word of God. Amen. We really need the word of God. And that's the reason why there's a lot of people not showing up because people ain't growing up. And you won't grow up if you don't show. I'm preaching and I ain't even started preaching yet. Just for a few minutes. Just for a few minutes. Just for a few minutes. I want to speak from this topic this morning. Don't give up. Don't give up. Life gets difficult. Life gets hard. We all go through some challenges in life. There are some good days and some bad days. There are days that everything seems to be going well. There are days that everybody in your family seems to be getting along well. There are days that you're able to make ends meet. There are days that you're able to put some food on the table. There are days that you can go out and do some shopping, but yet there's other days. There are some days that things are so bad that we just want to go to bed so that we can get this day over with. I, I know you've never been there before, amen, but, but I've been there before, amen, amen, amen. We all have some ups and we all have some downs, amen. We all have some good. And God deliver me from these church folks that have been in church so long that they forget where they came from, amen. They forget what it was like to, to, to worry. They forget what it was like to be concerned, amen. I thank God that God knows me. He knows me. I am he knows how I am and he knows what I'm thinking right. amen we'll come we have to stop we have to stop we really really have to stop church we have to stop having people come into church dressed up yeah. and I'm not talking about the suit that you put on amen I'm not talking about the dress that you put on but we got to stop making people think that you got to come to church dressed up I came from the old school where they said I came to Jesus just as I was. I was weary, wounded, and sad. Oh, but I found in him. A amen. Somebody know what I'm talking about. So we, we, we got to be real. We, we got to be real. Real quick, let me hit this real quickly. So, so John is now on the Isle of Patmos. He, he is now in isolation. John has been sent out and he ha is, 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 is a prisoner on the Isle of Patmos. He's away from other people. But I love what John said. He said, I was in the spirit yeah, on the Lord's day. In spite of the tribulation he was going through, in spite of the problem that he was dealing with, he said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. I thought more people would have got excited about that. But see, because John was saying it did not matter where I was. It did not matter what I was going through. When you are truly in relationship with God, then you can be in the spirit on the Lord's day. I get it. I understand. I understand. I get it. 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 I, get it. I, get it. I understand. Pastor, uh, uh, here, here's the issue. Here's the issue. The Lord just, just, just dropped it in my spirit. Here's the issue. There's a lot of people that have religion but don't have a relationship. And see, those religious people that don't have a relationship won't be in the spirit on the Lord's day. And I said I was in the spirit, not that I was full of spirits. Y'all act like y'all don't know what I'm talking about, but, but that's okay. I forgot. We in church. Amen. We put on our church faces. Amen. But he said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. 
He had a vision that he got from the Lord and he, he saw Jesus himself. And so when you look in Revelation, we're talking about Jesus himself is speaking. And he told him to write the things that you see. Make sure that you record the things that you see and I want you to send them to the seven churches. The churches is not the, I heard somebody say it this morning, the church is not this building, but the church is the people. Amen. He said, you write the things that you see to encourage the people that I see what the people are dealing with. I see what the people are going through. The first church that he worked to was the church of Ephesus, y'all. The church of Ephesus had a problem because the church of Ephesus had lost their first love. They had forgotten what the Lord had done for them. They had forgotten where the Lord has brought them from. And I'm afraid that there's one or two people up in this church today that have forgotten what the Lord has done for you. When you were so low that you couldn't pick yourself up, it was God that brought you through. They forgot, they forgot, they forgot, they forgot, they forgot, they forgot. He, he told them three things. He told them three things. He said, you need to remember. The second thing you need to do is you need to repent. And then you need to repeat. In other words, you need to remember where the Lord brought you from. Remember how low you was when the Lord picked you up. Remember how the Lord brought you out. Amen, amen, amen. And repent for the wrong that you have done. Repent from I'm talking to somebody today. Repent for the things that you have done and then repeat what you did before. When you first met the Lord, when you first fell in love with God, when you first met him, when you were down to your last and he made a way out of no way. Repeat those things. But don't give up. But don't don't give up. Now, now he writes to the church of Smyrna. As he writes to the church of Smyrna, there's three things I'm going to leave with you and I'm going to sit down. I promise you I'm not a long-winded preacher. There's three things that he said to the church of Smyrna that I want to say to the church of Mount Zion today. There's three things that he said. He, he said, he said, uh, 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 he said, uh, these things says the first and the last. So don't give up because Jesus is your power. I, I thought I would have had more people say, I forgot I'm not at home. Amen. I, 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 amen. No matter where you are, no matter what you're dealing with, no matter how difficult it is, no matter how hard it is, you should not give up because Jesus is your power. He's the first and he's the last. He's the beginning and he's the end. He was dead and he came back to life. There is nothing that God can't do. There is no situation that God can't fix. There is no sickness that God cannot heal. My God, your God, our God is able. And you have to remember that Jesus is your power. You won't give up. Amen. You won't give up. Amen. You won't give up when you remember that Jesus. Many people have a tendency of depending on their own power. Especially, especially us men folks. A amen, somebody. I can talk about the man because I am a man. All men. Amen, somebody. I said all men. I thank God. Let me, let me stop. 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 Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Because I'm going to get in trouble. I'm, I'm going to get in trouble. I, I'm recognizing folks and thanking God for folks. And I didn't recognize my good thing. 35 years ago. She said, I do. And I've been doing it ever since. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. So I thank God for my good thing. Amen. Amen. But even though we are men, even though we are men, there are some time that we get beside ourselves. There are some time that we don't think we need anybody. There are some time we don't think we need any help. But you got to remember that if it had not been for the Lord, that was on your side. Jesus is your power. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my life. In him I live, I move, and I have my being. He just read the scripture that said, if you abide in me, if you abide in me, that doesn't mean visit him on Sunday morning. That doesn't mean stop by during the week. But if you abide in him and let his word abide in you, then you will know that Jesus is your power. Don't give up. Don't give up. He told the church. He told the church, don't give up. The church was dealing with, 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 with a lot of uh, heartache. They were giving, they, they were, Smyrna was a very wealthy city. Smyrna was a very wealthy city. They had a lot of commodity. They had a lot of people that were making a lot of money, but they were uh, uh, ousting the people that were trying to follow God. 
And sometimes when you follow after Jesus, you'll find yourself by yourself. When you really following after Jesus, because everybody in church ain't going to heaven. Did y'all hear what I said? Amen. A amen. Everybody talking about heaven ain't going there. But when you really sell out for God, when you really made up your mind, for God I live and for God I die, I'm not going to do what I used to do because God delivered me from that mess. But we justify our behavior. Amen. Amen. I don't care about you getting mad. I already told you that. I, I don't care about you getting mad. I brought my son with me. Y'all didn't hear what I said. Amen. I got some help. Amen. Here, here's the fact of the matter. Here's the fact of the matter. We come in here and put on a facade on Sunday morning. Praise God on Sunday morning and raise hell on Sunday evening. Forget about the God that has brought us. But when you really get sold out for God, sometimes you'll find yourself by yourself. Amen. Because everybody don't want to hear the truth. But as me in my house. Amen, somebody. Some of y'all let stuff go on in your house. But as for me in my house. Some of y'all trying to make peace where you ought to be making some war. But as for me in my house. Some of y'all let stuff get along and letting stuff go on because they're your family but as for me in my house they ain't liking me they ain't liking me they ain't liking me they ain't liking me that's okay that's okay I, I promise God I'm a, I, I promise God I'm gonna do nothing but tell the truth so if you mad don't get mad at me get mad at God because God loves the truth amen but when you decide that I'm not going to give up You'll do that because you realize that Jesus is your power. Not only will you do that because I realize that Jesus is my power, but I also will realize that Jesus knows about my problems. Look in the text. Look in the text. I promise I'm in the text. All I know how to preach is the Bible, y'all. In the text, it said, I know your works. Can I just pause for a minute? It's a comma right there, so I'm going to stop for a minute. See, when there's a comma, you just don't run past the comma. Amen. You got to slow down and, and let the comma do its work. Amen. <laughs> and so I'm going to let the comma do its work for a minute. Amen. He said, I know your works. He knows what you're doing. And he knows what you're not doing. And some of us ain't doing nothing. Sister, brother, you have to give an account not just for what you do. But you have to also give an account for what you don't do. Remember where the Lord has brought you from. Remember what the Lord has done for you. And you ought to be serving. You ought to be working in the church. You ought to be being used by God. And so God says, I know your works. I know your works. Amen. I know the things that you're dealing with. I know the things that you're going through. No matter where you are, sister, no matter where you are, the Lord sent me here today from Mac Alma. The Lord sent me here today to tell you today that I know what you're dealing with. Y'all don't take this lightly. Don't take this lightly because I've learned a long time ago that people come through those doors on Sunday morning that are thinking about suicide. There are people that are dealing with all kind of things. Amen. And we got to make sure the spirit is right in the church. There is too much feeling that's going on in the church today. And we got to get out the way and let God have his way. I'm glad to see you. I'm glad you're here. But I didn't come to see you. I came to lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. We got to make sure we got the atmosphere right. Amen. Amen. Some of y'all sitting next to the wrong person. I'm just making all kind of enemies. I, I know I'm messing up. Start the truck. Start the truck. Amen. 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 Uh, uh, sometimes God's got something for you, but you miss it because you sat next to the wrong person. They want to talk about what they did last night. They want to talk about where they went last night. And God trying to give you a word to help you with what you're dealing with right now. But we miss it. Oh, I know I'm preaching. 
You know why, how, why you said that, Pastor Howard? The reason why I know I'm preaching, because there's some folks mad. I learned a long time ago. I've been preaching for a long time. I learned a long time ago, Mother, that if somebody ain't getting mad, you ain't preaching the word. God knows. God knows. God knows what you're dealing with. Amen. He knows about your problem. He knows about your situation. He knows what you're dealing with. And that's consolation for me. Because sometimes I used to sing that old song that I know y'all never heard of. But that old song said, nobody knows. The trouble I've seen. <laughs> y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Amen. Amen. I used to sing that song. But God knows the trouble you see. God knows what you're dealing with. God knows what you're going through. So stop lying and saying nobody knows. God knows. I don't care who you are. I don't care where you are. I don't care where you're from. God knows what you're going through. God knows what you're dealing with. So don't give up. Tell your neighbor, don't give up. Tell your other neighbor, don't give up. No matter what, you got to realize that Jesus is your power. That Jesus knows your problem. But then last time I'm going to sit in my seat, y'all. But they wrote this letter. He was writing this letter to encourage the church. I know your tribulation. I know the poverty. I know the things that you're dealing with. I know about the people that are perpetrating. I know about the people that are perpetrating. I know about the people that are perpetrating. I know I got some gray up here, amen, but I know a little bit about perpetrating, amen. I know about the people that are saying one thing and doing another thing, amen. They claim to be Jews, amen, but the Bible said they are from the synagogue of Satan. In other words, they look religious, they act religious, they dress religious, but they don't have no relationship. The Lord said, I know what you're dealing with. I, I, I know what you're going through. Amen. But, but look at what God said. Look at what God said. And I got to sit down. Look at what God said. The Lord said, I know what you're dealing with. I know what you're going through. I know your situation. But it's going to get worse. Hear me, hear me. I know nobody wants to hear this. Amen. Amen. You want me to give you some good news. Amen. That God getting ready to pull you out of there. I'm trying to encourage you not to give up because nobody has to encourage you not to give up when you already came out. You got to be encouraged not to give up when you're going through. He said the devil, the devil is going to have some of you thrown in prison for 10 days. And many theologians have argued about the fact, you know, preachers, they, we, they know everything. Preachers, yeah, we do. We, we, we know everything. Amen. You want to know something? You, you, you exactly preach. That's why I tell people all the time, read your Bible. Because half of us don't know what we're talking about. But it sounds good. Amen, somebody. Don't let us start hooping on you. Amen. And you don't know what we said, but you leave out of here saying, he sure preached. You better read your Bible. He says some of you will be thrown into prison so that you could be tested. In other words, sister, brother, what you're going through is only a test. And you will never stand with a testimony if you cannot withstand your test. Did you hear me? I said many people will not have a testimony because they give up in the middle of their tests. He said many of you, some of you are going to be thrown in prison and you will be there for 10 days. And so they argued the fact that, you know, what does the 10 days mean? The 10 days mean this. The 10 days mean that. You know what the Lord told me? 10, 10 days simply mean trouble. Don't last. I like it when y'all help me preach. Trouble ain't going to last great. Weeping may endure for a night. But if I hold on, if I don't give up, if I don't throw in the towel, God will. Don't give up because Jesus is your power. Don't give up because Jesus knows your problem. But lastly, don't give up because Jesus has your prize. I'm in the text. I'm still in the text. Be thou faithful unto death. Be thou faithful 
unto death. In other words, you have to understand that the context of the text is that there were people literally being killed. There were people that were literally, their lives was literally being taken. And yet, here comes this man of God telling me to be faithful unto death. Baby, what you got to understand is you got to understand I won't give up. I can't give up because God has my pride. He said, I will give you a crown of life. Now, there's multiple crowns in the Bible, but this particular crown is the winner's crown. In other words, it's not just the person that came in first, but the person that came through. I'm so glad that this crown, because I might not be the first, I might not be the best looking, I might not be the smartest, but I thank God that I got a crown. I will wear a crown when it's all over, when I've run my last race, when I've fought my last fight, when I've prayed my last prayer. I will wear a crown because Jesus gives me my pride. So what I encourage you, church. Don't give up. No matter what. No matter what comes your way. Remember that Jesus is your power. Remember that Jesus knows your, pra- your, your problems. And also Jesus has your prize. So whatever you do, my sister, my brother, I know it gets hard. I know it gets difficult. Even in the pulpit, we think about quitting. Even in the pulpit. We think about giving up. Even in the pulpit, we think about throwing it in the towel. I know the choir get tired of sitting their heart out and poking up, looking at them like, huh? Amen. It's hard, but 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 don't give up. I know the deacons get tired of coming in here and singing and praying and doing what the Lord told you to do, and folks act like they can't hear you, but don't you give up. I know that the members get tired. It seems like if it ain't one thing, it's another thing. But the Lord sent me here to tell you, don't you give up. I don't care what happens. I don't care what you have to go through. Because God will. God will see you through. If you don't, give up. Come on, give God a hand of praise. We stand to our feet all over the building. I want to extend an invitation. I want to extend an invitation. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus in the pardon of your sin, you've never been baptized, you've never given your life to Christ, won't you come? My sister, my brother, today is a good day to be saved. Don't put it off for tomorrow. Don't put it off for next week. If you are here today and if you don't know beyond a shadow of a doubt, That if I die, that heaven will be my home. If you don't know that, won't you come and let us pray with you. Let us pray for you. I offer you Jesus today. Come right now while the blood is still running warm in your veins. Don't worry about your neighbor. Don't worry about the person in front of you. Don't worry about the person behind you. You need to make sure you got things right with the Lord. Would there be one today? Would there be one today? Won't you come? Come on, would there be one today? Come on. Amen. You may be seated.
Amen. Those that desire to come to the altar for prayer. Amen. We definitely believe in the power of prayer. We believe that God still hears and answers the prayers of his people. Eternal God, our Father, we come in the name of Jesus. We come because your word says, ask and it shall be given. Your word says, seek and we should find. Your word says, knock and the door shall be opened. Your word says, God, we have not because we ask not. And Lord, we come right now because we need you, God, and we can't get along without you. I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you will look beyond the altar, God. Look around the building, God. Look around the pews, God. Somebody needs you today, God. Somebody is going through a personal storm. Somebody is going through a relationship storm. Somebody is going through a financial storm, God. But, Lord, I believe that you're able, God, to do anything but fail, God. And, Lord, we lift them before you right now, God. We bind the work of the enemy right now in the name of Jesus. We stand on your word, Lord God, that said that no weapon that formed against us shall be able to prosper. I might be going through now, God. I might have my back against the wall now, God. But I'm standing on your word, God. Where David said, I was young and now I'm old and I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging for bread. So God, do it right now, God. Do it right now, God. In the name of Jesus, God. Touch that lady today, God. Touch that son today, God. Touch that husband today, God. Work in that marriage today, God. Bless our children today, God. We thank you, Lord God, for covering them, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for blessing them, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for putting your seed on the inside of them. We thank you, Lord God, for everything that you're doing, God. And then, God, we pray for this church, God. We pray for this ministry right now, God. You have already designed, God, 
you have already decided, God. The church needs to decide, but you've already decided, God. You already know what you want, God. You already have decided, God. So I pray that you move on their hearts, God, that you move on their minds, God, that they will be listening to you, God, that they will listen to you, God. For your word says there's a way that seems right. We can do things, God, that we think is the right thing to do, God. But it's not what you would have us to do, God. And so, God, we love you, God. God, we love you, God. God, we love you, God. When we were down, God, you picked us up, God. When we were sick, God, you are our doctor in our sick room. When we were lonely, God, you are our company keeper, God. When we're in trouble, God, you brought us out, Lord God. You have been everything to us, God. And we love you, God. And so, Lord, we don't wait until we come out, God. But right now, we said thank you, God. We said thank you right now, God. We said thank you right now, God. We said thank you right now, God, for turning our situation around. We said thank you right now, God, for fixing it right now, God. We said thank you right now, God. We said thank you right now, God, because we are praying in faith, God. And we believe that it's already done. We lay it at your feet, God. We lay it at your feet, God. And although it's difficult right now, we'll stand on your word that says all things work together for the good of them that love you and are called according to your purpose. Bless this, your people, God. Watch over them, God, as they leave this place, but never from your presence. We pray that the grace of God, sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, will rest, rule, and abide with each of us until we meet again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.